let's go to the Effects tab. Here we can find all the video and audio effects. I cannot explain them all, because that will take a whole day. But if you know how to use one effect, it's easy to experiment and test out all the other effects. Effects, or plugins like we also say, are organized in folders. Presets, where you can find Premiere's presets, or you can also create user presets. Audio effects, which contains all the effects for audio. Audio transitions, which allows you to make transitions between two clips. For example, a fade. Then video effects and transitions, which speaks for themselves now. You can browse through these folders to choose your effect or transition. Or you can use the real-time search engine to find a particular effect. Let's apply the fast color corrector to our clip. Just drag it onto it. Or if you have your clip selected, you can also double click to apply it. Now head over to the effects control tab. If you don't see anything in here, simply select your clip. Like the basic properties, all effects have their own property. Some of them even have a visual, like the color wheel in this one. Change the values to a desired setting to achieve the output you want. But sometimes one effect isn't enough to achieve that. Then you can simply add more effects to that clip. Or you can even add the same effect multiple times. You can also do this by selecting an effect and copy-paste it. This will also duplicate the settings of the property within that effect. If you want to apply the same effect to other clips, you can also do this by copy-pasting it around. It will retain the value you have made. If you would like to make a global effect on all your clips, your whole edit or a big piece of it, you can select multiple clips and paste the effect over it. But if you change your mind now, you need to go back to every single clip and change the value. To fix that problem, we can nest our sequence. Let me show you what I mean. Select the clips you would like to have a global effect on. Right click and say Nest. The clip in the timeline has now turned green. This indicates that it's no longer a clip, but a sequence. If we go to our project panel, we'll see that Premiere Pro created a new sequence. If you open this, you can see the individual clips again. In other words, the clips have been grouped. Apply your effect on the nested sequence within your main sequence. All the clips have the same effect now, and you can change it simply with one action. As I was telling, you can also animate effects. If you watch near the properties of the applied effect, you'll see a stopwatch. All effects have properties, with such a stopwatch. This will allow you to animate that particular value. Now let's add a transition. Go to your effects and drag one of the transitions over two clips. And watch what happens. Now let's do some audio mixing. The meaning of audio mixing is that we balance our audio so that when someone is speaking, we lower the background to music. When he stops speaking, we increase the music again. There is a powerful tool within Premiere Pro for audio mixing, but I'm going to leave this for my advanced training. In this tutorial I will show you the basic understanding of audio mixing first. Let me import a clip of a speaking person and a song on the second layer. First, let's balance the two layers. We'll temporarily shut off the second audio layer, so that we can only hear the person speaking. Play the video and watch the audio meters. For broadcast, there are certain rules that you cannot go above a particular decibel. 
For the internet, I advise to mix around minus 3 decibels. Expand the audio and drag it a little bigger. The yellow line is the volume of that clip. The original volume is always 0 decibels. This is not the same as your meters. Your audio meters can indicate minus 12, while your clips lay on 0 dBs. If we add plus 3 decibels on our clip, the meters will increase 3 decibels, and it will show you minus 9 decibels. If you need to gain more than 6 decibels on your clips, you have to right click and say Audio Gain. Here you can add a value to increase your gain. You will see that the waveform also gets bigger now. Now move the yellow line or adjust the gain to balance the audio to a maximum of minus 3 decibels. And do the same for the music on Audio Layer 2. If the audio meters speak above 0 decibels, your signal will be distorted. Premiere will indicate this with a red color in your meters. Now that you have balanced your audio, we can start mixing those two audio layers. First, let the music play at its maximum volume. When the speaker comes in, we'll place keyframes to lower the volume of the music. We all know the technique of using the stopwatch, which you can find in your effect control. But since the yellow line represents the volume value, we're just going to work directly on that yellow line. Take the pen tool from your toolbox by pressing B. With the pen tool we can make visual keyframes in the timeline instead of your effect controls. Place a keyframe on the correct point in time by clicking with that pen tool on your yellow line. As you see, we created a keyframe, which you can also see appearing in your effect control. Now go a little further in time and click again to create a second keyframe. Now drag the keyframe down to change the value of that volume so that Premiere can animate it. We'll do the opposite again for when the person stops speaking. Now as you can visually see, we have lowered the volume of the music during the speech of the person. Let's play this clip to hear the effect. Hallo, ik ben Kim en in deze film Sirous uh, ben ik actrice en ook regisseuse. This is the basic of audio mixing.